Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hello, I'm Tom Long, a sinner saved by grace, trying to grow in grace until that day in which I see Jesus face to face. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most famous of the New Testament passages, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, known as the Beatitudes. Now, I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time <laughs> watching YouTube, more time probably than I should, and um, more than any TV channel. And one of the things I like to watch on YouTube is um, to watch movie trailers. So they give you previews of up upcoming movies or TV shows and these movie trailers kind of give you a teaser of what the movie is going to be all about. And when I think about the first four chapters of Matthew, I think Matthew is kind of giving us little teasers of what the meat of the story is going to be all about and the, and the themes that are going to be fleshed out in the rest of the gospel. So here's here's some of the teasers that are provided by Matthew in the first four chapters. He has angels declaring that the Messiah is going to be born to shepherds watching their flocks by night. He has uh, a voice coming out of the sky uh, declaring Jesus to be God's son as the dove of the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus when he is being baptized by John the Baptist. We have Satan who is tempting Jesus for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness uh, unsuccessfully. And you have Herod uh, who tries to derail the ministry of John the Baptist, the prophet that has been sent to prepare the way for the Messiah. Uh, so Herod has him put in jail to shut him up. And what does Jesus do? He withdraws from Nazareth and goes to Capernaum in Herod's Tetrarchy and he continues this message of repent, think in a new way, have a new mindset. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so that brings us uh, up to the point in Matthew chapter 4, just before we transition to the, to the Sermon on the Mount. It brings us up to the point where Jesus is healing every uh, disease and, and sickness that, that he encounters. And uh, it says in verses 24 and 25, news about him spread all over Syria and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed. And he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, that is the 10 cities, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him, followed Jesus. So these are the people on whom Jesus focused. Not the rich, not the powerful, not the political, not the official uh, religious establishment leadership. Jesus focused on people who had needs. So all of these things are um, previews, teasers of what it is that the kingdom of heaven is going to be about. And now we come to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount. And we're told that Jesus calls his disciples to himself, and then he sits down. Now, that's significant because when a rabbi sat down, that meant he was going to begin uh, his formal instruction. And we have a lot of turns of phrase that refer back to these kinds of traditions. For example, uh, we talk a, about a professor's chair. We talk about uh, the Pope speaking ex cathedra, that is, out of the chair. And so th this is a tradition that Jesus is steeped in, uh, that when he sits down to teach, this is it, guys. So I've been giving you uh, proclamations. I've been giving you good news. But now I want you to, to listen as I give you my formal instruction as your teacher. And then 
We lose something in the New International Version translation, I'm sorry to say. Uh, it says that, and he opened his mouth saying. And so <clears throat> this expression of to open your mouth, that's a way that the, the Greeks would identify the fact that um, someone was going to proclaim something out of the very core of who they are. And, and so this is going to be a formal rabbinic teaching, and it's also going to be a very personal, intimate expression of who Jesus is at his core. And then my last nitpick with the NIV translation is that uh, it, it says that he taught them. Well, it's actually in the imperfect tense. And, and what Matthew was saying is he used to teach them. And this was his pattern of teaching. So Matthew is going to compile into the Sermon on the Mount the things that Jesus routinely taught. And so in other Gospels, you'll see these uh, teachings scattered here and there throughout the story of Jesus' life and ministry. And Matthew, they're all compiled into this uh, quite long Sermon on the Mount. And the Beatitudes are the introduction to that. They're the overture. So it's we've had the teasers. You know, we watched the movie teasers on YouTube about uh, what the kingdom of God was going to be like. Now we're sitting in the theater. The music is, the, the screen lights up. The music for the movie begins. And uh, maybe you had this experience with some blockbuster movies like the theme from uh, Star Wars or some of these great movie overtures. Uh, or maybe you're a more classical person and you're thinking of the overtures uh, that are played for operas. But either way, it's a, it's a preview of what it is that the movie is going to be about. What's its content going to be? What's its tone going to be? What, what's at the heart of the movie? And so that's what the Beatitudes are. They are going to set us up to receive the teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. And they're called Beatitudes because there's a pattern in the uh, verses 3 through 10, these seven verses. There's a pattern where that each verse begins with the word blessed. And then it tells us who's blessed and how they're blessed. So that's why it's uh, referred to as uh, the Beatitudes. Now, blessed is an interesting word because... Uh, they referred in those days to an island off of Greece, Cyprus, uh, as the Blessed Isle. And what they meant by that was that Cyprus had the perfect climate, fertile soil, flowers, fruit, everything that one could want to lead a happy or blessed life. It was all contained within, in that island. Now, Blessed is not the same thing as happy. And so I, I tend not to like the word happy, and I'll tell you why. Because happy has the same root as happenstance or happening. And, and happiness depends on what's happening, that the, the circumstances that are around one. And if you're a sports fan, like, like uh, I'm not really a big sports fan, but I am a fan of the uh, West Virginia Mountaineers, and uh, I can tell you that there are times when I get quite excited. I'll be watching a football game, for example. There's two minutes left, and the, and the Mountaineers score a touchdown to finally, for the first time in the game, they take the lead, and it's the end of the game. There's only two minutes left. And we're all dancing. We've spilled our popcorn. We're dancing around the living room, cheering them on. And then they kick the ball off, and the other team returns the kickoff for a touchdown to retake the lead and to defeat us. So in one instant, I go from the circumstances being such that I'm all happy and rejoicing to where I am sitting there, you know, all dejected on the couch, like, what just happened? Blessing isn't like that. To be blessed is to have a joy that doesn't depend 
on life's circumstances. And I'm going to get more into that in just a second. But let's look at this, this pattern. Who is blessed and how they're blessed. And then we'll come back and talk about how blessing is independent of our situation. So who's blessed? The poor in spirit. How are they blessed? Theirs is the kingdom of God. And then you go down to verse 10. Who is blessed? Those who are persecuted for Jesus' sake. How are they blessed? Theirs is the kingdom of God. So the sandwich, the, the blessing sandwich, is those that are blessed with being part of the kingdom of God. This is a description of who's going to be part of God's kingdom. So we've already had a glimpse, right? Remember the preview where he's going to all the sick, the afflicted, the weak, the powerless, the despised? He's going to them and he's healing them and he's caring for them and he's with them. These are the people that Jesus went to. So now he's going to describe more what the kingdom of heaven, who, who we are that are part of the kingdom of heaven. And so he begins with the poor in spirit and he ends with the persecuted. Those are not people in happy circumstances. He, be, he, he then goes on to uh, blessed are those who mourn. They're going to be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They're going to be filled. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are children of God. And so you see that in this uh, situation, the, these aren't people that are all having happy circumstances. Their teams aren't all winning the game. Their lives aren't all peaches and cream. These are people that are going through difficult times like I might be going through and you might be going through. And yet, in the midst of that, they are blessed. Why? Because they are part of Jesus' community. They are. God is with them. God is caring for them. And they have a hope and they have a community. So what if the Beatitudes aren't commandments like the Ten Commandments what if they're not a, a measuring stick to uh, measure you know how good we're doing what if instead they are snapshots of this is what the community of heaven is like this is what the kingdom of heaven is like this is what the kingdom of God is like blessed is the community who makes room for peacemakers blessed is the community who makes room for the weak Blessed is the community that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Blessed is the community who are poor in spirit. Blessed is the community who makes room for those who mourn in our broken world. Blessed is the community who are unstained by the impurity of the world. Blessed is the community who knows persecution will come if your focus is on the people that are downtrodden, that are powerless, that are despised, afflicted, that are people that uh, the proper society doesn't like, doesn't want to associate with. We know that persecution will come, but we are blessed if we go to those people and we make a family with them anyway because that is Jesus family he's blessing those who already have a vision of what that community can be like and he's also encouraging those who haven't caught that vision to be welcomed into our community and become part of the kingdom of God and we are blessed to be part of that community in order that we might become a blessing to those that we are inviting to join us to be gathered around Jesus as he sits and teaches and opens his heart and brings truth to us and brings healing to us and brings hope that the circumstances that we are in today that's not for eternity that our hope is in him and someday we shall see him face to face and we shall be like him according to John 
for we shall see him as he is. Won't you join this ragtag band of people that Jesus came to make a family? Consider it. Mm -hmm.